Hey guys, welcome back to thinkassive.ca. I've got Eva and Laura from Family Mediation Group, and we're talking about the financial impacts on couples going through a divorce or separation. Uh, so let's talk about matrimonial homes. Uh, it's a huge thing because that's a, a, often a major sticking point. Yeah. They've got a home. Yeah. What happens to it? So yeah. tell me about it. What, what's the big deal there? Well, if you go to court, it's fairly simple. You know, uh, if two people are fighting, then a judge will just push the house to be for sale mm -hmm. and you split the proceeds in some proportion, right? Okay. That's really the end of the conversation. In mediation, you can be a lot more creative and we can meet the unique needs of the family, right? So someone can buy out mm -hmm. the other part of it. Mm -hmm. um, we also have people who remain in the home for a little bit longer mm -hmm. um, and decide to sell at a different time. Um, we also have parents who maybe one will rent from the other and stay in the home mm -hmm. because it's beneficial for the children to stay in the same area, go to the same school, so on and so forth. So you mm -hmm. really can be rather really, really creative with a matrimonial home. And that's very important because lots of times mm -hmm. um, you don't have that um you don't have that ability when you go to court. Mm -hmm. um, and in here, we see lots of, uh, the, the needs are very different. So one parent may indeed need to stay in the house. The other parent may need to, may want to buy the other person out. And, uh, you know, agreeing on that number, uh, it's very hard because no judge has really a jurisdiction to, uh, you know, order a number. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's why you end up being, you know, like the, the only order is going to be sell a house, split the proceeds. Mm -hmm. uh, but for example, when you agree on a buyout number, right? right. You can be, then you can bring all your, sort of um, fairness or ethical, moral sort of elements that have created your relationship, your partnership, your marriage mm -hmm. in, in place. So if the house mm -hmm. is valued, let's say at, you know, 800,000 um, and 400 is one mm -hmm. person, the other one is 400, they can agree on a buyout of 300 or a little less in exchange of, you know, just just acknowledging that, uh, yes, I, I- Maybe one contributed to the property more than the other. Exactly. Okay. I did okay. all right. the rentals and I right. paid for it during it. So they can have that discussion. And then financially, they can it can be reflected financially. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. So they can create those numbers. Uh, they have the freedom and they have the exactly. the means to do it. This way that one partner stays in the house and can afford now to have the house because mm -hmm. he or she bought it at a mm -hmm. little bit of a lower price. I'm not saying it has to be lower all the time. It can be higher, to be honest, sometimes. Mm -hmm. yeah. An acknowledgement, it's like, okay, you need the house. So, so mom or dad has been at home mm -hmm. um, and needs mm -hmm. to stay to remain in the home doesn't really have much other you know means to uh, buy a new house um, or another property so the other person you know offers mm -hmm. a buyout that's a bit higher than okay. the market value right okay. so that's something that there's no way you can do anywhere else <laughs> gotcha do you yeah. know what i mean you yeah. can't so yeah. the, those how how huge no is it's, that? it's huge for people and especially for parents the mm -hmm. reality is your child's life is going to be somewhat connected to their home mm -hmm. right so they have school they have friends they have extracurriculars mm -hmm. so the topic of the home and where someone is going to live becomes incredibly important mm -hmm. when we're at the mediation table and people don't realize that we can get so creative we can mm -hmm. be mm -hmm unique to their needs. Um, I think that's the most important is yeah. having those conversations, especially because going through divorce is hard enough, mm -hmm. right? Then to consider, so, for some people, to consider moving mm -hmm. is already overwhelming in and of itself. Like mm -hmm. we get a ton of people to the table who say, I don't want to talk about this. This is too much. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I can't think about selling my home. And mm -hmm. we say, no, there are other options. You can stay in it. Mm -hmm. Let's talk to a mortgage broker. Let's talk to a financial advisor. Let's get a team in. And mm -hmm. that's when spousal support comes in, right. for example, as mm -hmm. well, right? Because mm -hmm. let's say someone needs to stay in the home or mm -hmm. wants to stay in the home. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, you know, yeah. um, spousal support now can be that lump sum. So you can, you can, now you can look at, all the ele all the financial elements and start you know creating this big puzzle and start moving the pieces mm -hmm. yes. to meet that family's needs so now if that person needs to stay in the house uh, or that person needs to move out they may need a lump sum mm -hmm. for a down right. payment of the house yeah. so that's when we need people like mortgage. we need mortgage Mortgages, absolutely yeah. right. we need we need them to come in and say okay well you need a lump sum this is what the you amount need. what's interesting is that mm -hmm. what, what, with the mortgage background that i have that uh, the government has put in place that if someone's going through a divorce, you could actually refinance up to 95%. Wow. That's well, only available 
if you're going through a divorce. Hmm. If you're hmm. staying together, you don't have that benefit. Well, right? right. You can only go up to 80%. So right. that in itself is something that they re- they recognize that there's such a high level of separation and divorce and there's yeah. going to be a need to help people out. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, you know, that there are so many different ways of being able to help out clients um, going through this. And mm-hmm. it's good to hear that you guys are doing it the humane way. And, mm-hmm. and it's not just... Like you, uh, you had referred to before, it's not just a black and white object right. that we're just dividing down the middle, and there's no rhyme or reason, right? You actually can get mm-hmm. creative about this stuff, which is good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, outside of matrimonial home, I'm assuming this you could almost apply similar concepts to your RSPs, your, your absolutely, investments. absolutely. All, yes. You know, like you could have two spouses, and, and and one of them has a lot of RSPs. And the other one doesn't because mm-hmm. of whatever their circumstances. Right. You can start getting creative of how to split that sort of stuff up. And that's mm-hmm. the great thing about mediation. If you go to court, they kind of look at every topic separately. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. They'll talk about the home. Then they'll talk about pensions. Then they'll talk about custody. And it'll be three separate issues, maybe on three separate different months. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> Whereas at mediation, we can talk about them all together and use them as puzzle pieces to feed off each other. Mm-hmm. So if someone wants to stay in their own home, but they also don't have any uh, pensions, or they need spousal support we can talk about the conversations Mm -hmm. together okay so that we can all kind of bleed together and that's why having kind of a multidisciplinary approach is the most helpful because then we can bring in other people who specialize Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. and can help us with that conversation so we have that all the time where we have people um, feeding off their needs for splitting up their RRSPs and their investments with a spousal support obligation Mm-hmm. Right or pension, pension. So right. it's everything that we, everything that you can think of, property that you know the RSPs are included, the savings, investments, all of those stuff, and the law is pretty clear. You're legally married. It's half half. Yeah. yeah. However, you know the humane way or the reality is that there's more than just the law that comes into play, right? And it has come into play during your partnership and your marriage or relationship. Mm-hmm. So that's when you start getting, you know, you yeah. like acknowledgement, mm-hmm. having a discussion about it. Um, I actually have a case right now that, oh, we we have one right now with a pension um, that he has accumulated this very large pension, mm-hmm. and. Um, uh, but he also came in with a lot of money mm-hmm. in the in the marriage, mm-hmm. and there is an acknowledgement right now from the wife that okay, so I'm not going to touch your pension because you also came in with a lot of money mm-hmm. for the down payment of whatever right. home. Mm-hmm. So you know, even though the loss is half half, she's saying keep your pension. Thank yeah. you for putting the down payment to the house. So mm-hmm. that. Again, you cannot get that type of in the division. Law, like, the, the law will just say no, 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 okay. no, no, no. They won't even no. have those conversations. And I was actually thinking of a similar case mm-hmm. where we have had families say, you know, I'm I'm 54, I'm 55. To split my pension now mm-hmm. would be, it feels detrimental, mm-hmm. right? Like, where am I going to start over? How am I going to get this money back, mm-hmm. right? And we can, that's how we can be creative and say, okay, instead of maybe doing a rollover now or splitting something now and taking on tax consequences that we don't All need, the time, yeah. we mm-hmm. can be a little bit more creative with maybe the proceeds of the home, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Or a spousal support obligation, setting it off, okay, right? Okay. Because I, you know, I always feel for those people who are close to retirement Mm -hmm. and going through a divorce because it's a lot of times it's not something we've planned for yeah financially right we've planned Mm -hmm. a financial future but we didn't plan this emotional journey we're going on with a divorce right which has financial consequences okay okay well listen thank you guys for the information that's all we have uh for this moment uh we will be back with other topics in the future but thank you for joining thank you thank you Mm -hmm.